Okay, enough talking. So to compile it, compile. compile. <laughs> Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back. In this video, we will be building a menu extension for Studio Pro. This video is building on the previous one where we set up our development environment. So if you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch it now so that you're all set up and ready to go. Right, let's get into it. All right, the first step to creating an extension is to create a manifest.json file. To do this, uh, we just need to right click on the project here on the right hand side in the Solution Explorer. So we right click and we say add and then new item. And then it's going to create a CS file, but we just need to rename it and we just say manifest.json. Okay, now open up the file. And before we do any coding here, uh, we need to change one option here in the properties window. So it's down here in the right hand side in the properties. And this option here to copy to output directory. Um, we want to set this to copy always. Now this is important because the manifest.json file is what's going to tell Studio Pro that there is an extension and which files are available for that extension. Okay, so after this, we just need to add some simple JSON to this file. Now it's very simple, it's two lines. So we're just going to open curly braces and then in quotes, mx underscore extensions. Um, close the quotes and we're going to do colon square bracket and then uh, now it's your extension name um, so this one is my first extension and then you have to put dot dll and close the quotes close the square brackets comma and then the second line is just going to be in quotes mx underscore build and then underscore again and say extensions and then colon and then an empty square bracket. Okay, so that's the whole manifest file then. Okay, we're done creating the manifest and now we can go on to creating the actual menu item. So we're gonna right click on the project again in the solution explorer and we're going to add a new item once again. So in the manifest file, I gave it the name myfirstextension.dll. So I'm going to name this one the same thing. So this file is going to be my first extension dot cs and click add so visual studio is going to pre-populate some content here for us so it's going to put in some skeleton code for us and it's going to be creating a namespace and an internal class declaration for us so that's what we have here that's what it says namespace my first extension and then the internal class declaration what we need to do is we need to make sure that this class is exported as an extension and we can do this with a bit of basic scaffolding so first off we need to underneath namespace the namespace line so line seven we're going to go to eight and in square brackets we're going to say method colon importing constructor then close the bracket and then another line, square brackets again. I'm going to say export braces. I'm going to say type of, and then again another brace, type of menu extension. And then we just need to close off the brackets, and that's all we need. Next up, we need to define the return type and we need to call a message box service using the extensibility API. So this is that package that we downloaded using NuGet. We're gonna call some functions from that. So underneath the export declaration, we're gonna change the internal class. We're gonna make it public. So public class my extension, and this is using iMessageBox service. So iMessageBox service message box service and then at the end here you put colon menu extension okay so we've changed this from an internal to a public class and we've defined this as a menu extension so the next thing we need to do is we need to override the get menus function now get menus comes from the extensibility api it's in that NuGet package and this basically returns to Studio Pro the list of menu items which are available to it. So now we need to define a return type and call a message box service using the extensibility API. So underneath where I've done export type of menu extension here, I need to add another function. And we're gonna say public override i enumerable 
and then we're gonna do a greater than menu view model and then less than and then we need to call the get menus function now what get menus does is this is part of the extensibility api and it is returning the menu items that studio pro can display so what we need to do is add a yield statement which is going to return a new menu item the one we are creating so the way we do that is inside of this function here we can just do a inline function and we're going to say yield return new menu view model and then in brackets we're going to do our inline function so the first thing is the actual menu label the text that's going to show in studio pro and we're going to say say hello and then close the quotes comma and then we're going to do a nice little inline function here so open brackets close brackets equals less than and then we're going to say message box service dot show information and then this is telling studio pro it's going to show a message and we just need to give it what that message says in this case it is hello world as always so we need to close that off add a colon and that is everything you need to do coding wise so after adding all of this code, you've actually created your first menu extension. All you need to do now is to compile this into usable code. And to do that, we compile a .dll file. To compile it, we're gonna go into the build menu here and click on build your project. Um, and it's gonna say build your project name. So now that has compiled this into a actual usable file. And you can find it in your project directory for uh, your Visual Studio project. So we need to copy these files from Visual Studio's output path and put it into Mendix Studio Pro's app directory. So just click on your project in Visual Studio. It's the quickest way to get there and say open folder in file explorer. Okay, so now we need to go to the bin folder and then debug and then into net 8.0. So the full file path is going to be your extension name slash your extension slash bin debug dot net 8.0. And in this folder, you can see there are four files here. What we need to do is copy all four of these files into your Mendix app directory. So it's going to start from the manifest JSON and it's going to be the my first extension dot DLL. Uh, there's also another dot JSON file and a PDB file. Okay, so now we have these four files from Visual Studio and we're gonna just copy them here. So Control C and then we're gonna switch to our Mendix Studio app directory. And we're gonna create a new file here called extensions. Now in this folder, you have to create a new subfolder and this one is called exactly what your extension is called. So mine is called my first extension. So we can open this up and then just paste in the four files there. Now we can just go back to Studio Pro. So I'm gonna switch again. And you can either just hit F4 or you can go here under app and say synchronize app directory. And basically this is just telling Studio Pro to refresh and look what's in your directory again. So if you've had a successful build, uh, you should actually immediately see this new item over here. Um, so this is the extensions menu item. We defined this in the code. And if you click into it, you will see your new menu extension. So here it says, say hello. And if we click it, we see the little message box that says, hello world. Okay. That's all for this video. Come back next time where I'll show you how to make your own dockable pane extension able to display any website of your choice. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Markey.